The second season of 13 Reasons Why is now streaming on Netflix, so let's review. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Rogers, and a spoiler warning is in effect. Now before we get started, this video is brought to you by Amino. Amino is a free app for Android and iPhone and is a network of communities for every interest you can think of. Whether it's 13 Reasons Why, Riverdale, Stranger Things, it's the best place to easily find and chat with people that love the same things you do. There are Amino communities for literally every show out there. It can be sci-fi, horror, teen drama, whatever it is, you can find it on Amino with other fans that are keen to discuss. Are you a creative type? Then be sure to check out the latest edits and fan art. There's no better way to browse user-created content as well as share your own creations to one of Amino TV's communities. And when you run out of episodes to watch and you just need someone to talk to, Amino communities are always there and just as excited as you are to like and discuss your predictions, theories, and ships for all the shows. Amino is the place to go to surround yourself with similar-minded people and lets you geek out together. Make sure you check out the Icebreaker Challenge currently taking place in the the 13 Reasons Amino, where you can get to know fellow fans of the show. You can join me in the 13 Reasons Why Amino via the link in the description. Okay, let's get into it. Season 2 dropped May 18 and boy do we have a lot to talk about. We come back five months after the events of the first season and the inquiry into Hannah's death is officially underway. Now the first thing I noticed was the massive shift in genre and direction from season one. Obviously we've heard all the tapes now so Hannah's not narrating the main story. Instead, every episode is similarly narrated by the character that is testifying in court. Because of this, it immediately feels like more of a spin-off than a continuation of the original story. Before it was even released, there was a lot of controversy around this season because season one wrapped up so well. And a lot of people thought that a second season would be hard to pull off due to the absence of Hannah. But they certainly found a way around that issue. So we saw in the trailer that Clay has been haunted by his memory of Hannah, but I don't think we quite realised the extent this memory would play into the story. So having Hannah still in the show is obviously a crowd pleaser, and I get that it played as both a way for Clay to deal with a tragedy, as well as an excuse to have the two of them share more screen time. But this isn't just a memory of her that shows up every now and then. She's a fully sentient version of herself. Some would even say a ghost. At first you think it's just Clay going mad and what he sees is just the image he's built up of her in his head. But then she starts answering questions that only she would know and I don't know, it starts feeling a bit paranormal after a while. But you can't fault Catherine Langford's acting. She brings a vibrance to every scene that she's in and does give Clay someone to bounce off. What surprised me was that the hearings often referred back to the events of the third tapes and added more layers to what we already knew, sometimes opening our eyes to see that things were more complicated than we first thought. Hannah's dad is actually a huge jerk and had an affair which Hannah knew about before she died. And Hannah had a secret fling with Zack who took her virginity and they actually were a cute couple. And interestingly there was more of an interaction with Bryce than what we've seen previously. Plus a naughty little three-way with Alex and Jessica. Actually, I want to talk a bit about Jessica. I don't know what happened between seasons one and two, but I found her character this season to be almost unbearable. I don't know if it was the writing for her or even her acting, but her scenes just fell incredibly flat, even in her more dramatic scenes. And her scenes with Alex had zero chemistry and were just cringe-worthy to watch. If you ask me, the real chemistry was between Alex and Zach. Now, Alex is obviously alive and recovering from his attempted suicide from the season one finale. It was nice to see his character a bit more fleshed out, seeing him unravel and bring himself back together. His whole sexually frustrated storyline was a bit weird though. Women couldn't get him excited and there wasn't any action until he was wrestling with Zack. But that's not referenced again and he ends up with Jessica in the end. A couple of characters worth noting. Tony, I really liked his story arc. We definitely got a peek behind the tough facade and piece together why he is the way he is. And also Mr. Porter, who is trying to make up for what happened with Hannah, seeing him break down in court was genuinely hard to watch. But let's talk about the real problem child of season two, Tyler. We all knew that after the tapes, Tyler would probably snap, and we see that come to fruition slowly but surely. Firstly, with his anti-establishment goth friends and their sister who looks 30 years old. He then self-destructs, which has him sent to a correctional facility. Tyler's story was actually one of my favourite parts, because it seems predictable at first, but then it just spirals out of control and just gets worse and worse. And just when you think it's going to turn around, he snaps and seeks revenge. 
Speaking of which, the final episode was all over the place. We started off with a long-awaited funeral for Hannah and a touching speech by Clay. Justin weirdly became Clay's adopted brother and it felt like it was all wrapping up. But then Tyler has a breakdown and we think we are gonna get what we all predicted. My heart was in my throat the whole school dance thinking that Tyler was gonna burst in guns blazing. But in the last five minutes, Clay stops him and it sort of leaves you with an anti-climax. Tyler's storyline was building up for the entire season and then just fizzles out at its peak. Don't get me wrong, it would have been horrible for our favourite Liberty High students to meet such a tragic end. But characters like Bryce and Montgomery are still yet to be brought to justice. But let's not forget about the one victim that he did manage to shoot down. I feel like they haven't left themselves with a strong enough storyline to make a worthwhile third season, so I don't know what they're gonna do. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought of season two and should there be a season three? I'll be chatting with you guys in the comments. But thanks so much for hanging out. If you had a good time, then spank that like button. And if you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.